people just want to know how how is the relationship between uh, you and you and Rudy? Yeah, um, you know, I'll kind of address this one just for everybody and kind of just leave it uh, after this. To be honest with you, I understand that y'all got to ask this question, but you know, right now we're good. We're going out there ready to hoop. Um, and I think the biggest thing, you know, that that kind of sucked was that it took away from the guys on the team. Um, took it to go the guys on the team were trying to do. And I, I really wish that, you know, as going forward, you know, I think that'll be really the primary focus is just us gelling as a team because obviously you and Rudy and I had COVID and whatever happened, happened. But, you know, now we're ready to hoop and focus on the team as, as a whole, you know, because we're not really trying to keep taking attention away from what everybody's got going on. Obviously, we got Boyan now, so we have some guys that are really looking good and, and ready to step up. And uh, that's what we're really excited about. Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, next question we will get from Tony Jones. Tony? Uh, we can't hear you, Tony. Come on, Tom. I just click the unmute button. My bad. I got. I forgot to unmute. Um, uh, how you doing? First of all, second of all, um, you know, what are some of the things that that you you did uh, with your time off, uh, basketball wise, just staying in shape, um, staying sharp, and 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 you know, just kind of working on your craft. Um, it was tough to be honest with you. It was tough to kind of. Cause I really didn't have much. I was in the basement of my, my mom's house for most of the time, but uh, really doing a lot of, a lot of sprints. You know, I think it took about maybe three weeks off. Um, and I think for after that, I just kind of got into the weights. We continued the weights with the team on via zoom, um, but did a lot of sprints on the, on the, uh, on a field right down the street from my house, a lot of bike exercises um, as much as I could conditioning wise, understanding I couldn't get onto a court uh, for, for a very long time. And I've been, you know, I've been fortunate enough to have a court, you know, and kind of get after for the past month and a half, two months. So uh, that's really what I've been at. Just continue to re refine my game and, and work on what I what I can, you know, obviously with really no rebounder and really no help. You kind of it's kind of like being in the park by yourself. But it's been it's been weird. It's been challenging. Um, even got to shooting in my backyard um, on concrete. That's really what it came down to, just because, you know, the resources that I had, I didn't really have much. But. Uh, now that we're back, we're glad to be back in market and kind of just get right to it and um, just continue to, to pick up where we left off. Okay. Thanks, Donovan. Uh, next question will be from Sarah Todd. Sarah? Hey, Don. How's it going? How you doing? Um, good. I have a couple of questions. The, um, they're related to each other. The first one being... Um, I just want to get your feelings and thoughts about kind of what happened after the Utah Jazz Black Lives Matter post and then your Juneteenth mm -hmm. post and mm -hmm. kind of your feelings around that situation and how you feel your approach moving forward should be or anything that your thoughts and then tail tailing off that what your approach will be in Orlando to kind of try to keep the conversation going around racial inequality and reform and things like that. Um, I'll start off with the first one. I think, you know, I think it opened a lot of eyes, to be honest with you, when um, that post uh, came out and the comments and stuff. And it's easy for people to say, don't read them. It's tough when there's outrageous and, and, and crazy. And then you click on the C and it's not like they're bots, you know, as people call them, they're, they're people who live not only here, but in, in different places. And I spoke out about it, especially primarily here because I live here, I play here, um, I represent, you know, us as 15 guys represent the jazz as far as the Utah, as far as basketball is concerned. And we use, we understand that it's not just basketball that we, you know, where we use our platform, not just for what we do on the court, but what we do off the floor, you know, myself, Mike, uh, JC went protesting. Um, so many different guys on our team have done so many different things. And I think to see that after understanding that the same people that were saying what they were saying were the same ones coming to celebrate and, and, and cheer. And I think that's, that's really where I was just, I can lie to you, pretty pissed off. And it's kind of like, man, like, you know, 
for for my for my career, I speak for myself when I say this for the past two, two or three years, you know, I've gave it all. And then, you know, that you see that. And it's tough to see that as an African American male because not only just what happens in Utah, I, I understand it's not just a Utah thing. And I want people to understand that it's not like it's just Utah. This happens everywhere. It, it's it's it happens everywhere. But you know, like I said, I spoke out on it, especially because I play here and I'm and I and I live here. And I want it to be known that I'm going to continue to use my platform, continue to use my voice that I that I have because I feel like that's that's what's necessary. And I think a lot of people don't understand certain situations that I've been brought up in. That you know, Royce has been brought up in, Mike, JC, uh, Manuel, Rudy. Like, there's so many different uh, backgrounds, and guys come from different backgrounds. I think people, you know, not only just in Utah but everywhere, need to understand that you know the experiences that we have may can be completely different. And hopefully this conversation opens a lot of eyes, especially here in Utah, because, um, you know, there's a certain stigma. There's no secret about it, that about Utah. And, you know, obviously the comments didn't didn't help. But, you know, for for us as athletes, we wanted to be known that we won't stand for any of the the racism and, and whatever came what else comes with that. You know, I think that's the biggest thing for for my comments and um, and reading and, and responding to what we responded to. Um, and then sorry, the second part of your question. How do you uh, how do you keep the conversation going in Orlando? Um, I think we do it. I think we do it in many different ways. Um, to be honest with you, I think you know we're doing a, we're doing a great job. I think the PA and the league has done a great job of understanding putting the Black Lives Matter on on the court, and that way it's at least aware. People, it's always on people's minds. It's going to be right there, you know. But I think the one thing that does <clears throat> that 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 is unfortunate is that we can't be there on the front lines anymore helping out, you know, at least the teams that are in the bubble. So we have to do it not just as players, but as a, as a, as a, as a league, we have to really make a statement. Um, we're working on a bunch of things that I, I can't really say right now, but I think there's a lot of things that are going to come out of us being down there in that bubble. Um, but, you know, I, I, I do wish to be honest with you, I do wish that we were able to be there on the front lines as opposed to being in that bubble. I, and I, that's my personal opinion, because I think that's just, something that really needs attention, you know, as opposed to, you know, people talking about who had 30 or 40 or who won this game. It should be about Breonna Taylor. You know, it should be about so many other different things that are going on in the world right now that should be really brought attention to. Uh, but with that being said, work calls and duty calls and we have to go and we'll go down there and continue to, to use that platform that we have down there partnered with different teams, different guys in the league, and then uh, our league as well to go out there and, and make the most of it and, and go out there and continue to, you know, spread the message and, and, and spread all of the knowledge that a lot of guys in this league have, you know, a lot of guys one through 15, you know, whether it's uh, LeBron, Steph Curry, or the 15th man on the roster, it doesn't matter who it is. Um, guys have voices. And I, I think they're doing, I think we're going to do a great job when we go down there and have one guys, one through 15, let their voices be heard. Thank you. All right. Uh, next question will be from Eric Woodyard. Eric. Uh, what's up, man? What up, babe? <clears throat> so for you, man, early on in your career, man, you've received no, so much positive attention, man, from coming out of nowhere from Louisville, mm -hmm. doing whatever everything you did. How has it been for you to deal with that side of it? I mean, now you're seeing the other side of professional basketball from receiving negative attention and being in the middle of things. How has that, has that shaped your opinion of being a professional or what's your thoughts on just all you had to go through these last few months? <laughs> I make the joke. It's been a long few months for me. I can't lie to you. Um, but I think the biggest thing it's allowed me just, it allows you just a sense of maturity, you know, like allow you to grow and, and kind of, I think the biggest thing with this virus and, you know, the, unfortunately it came to the death of George Floyd, it opened not just my eyes, but a lot of people's eyes in this country to a lot of different things. Um, and I think it's allowed people to kind of just stop and sit back, you know, as you know, as you, you, you know, you like, I've been going nonstop since I got into the league, you know, whether it's. You get in, you start playing the dunk contest, the playoffs, go to China, go to all the different places for Adidas, come back, play again, go back overseas, play with Team USA, and then another shoot tour. So I've been going nonstop, really. So now I think this time has allowed me really just to sit back and just watch. You know, I'm asking questions from guys around the league, how they handle different things. And I think it's been a time for me to really just find myself in a way that, you know, I never really found because I've been on the move for so long. So it's allowed me to kind of sit there and understand that one, this is a business, you know, and, and, and being a professional is, there's going to be highs, there's going to be lows. And I knew that on the court, especially, but off the court, like you said, there's so many different things. There's going to be things that are great. And there's going to be things that kind of open your eyes and kind of make you sit back and, and just 
reevaluate and look at things. And I think that's been the biggest thing for me and just being able to adapt to that without, you know, kind of going crazy. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.